Hello, this is a demo of the new flash format feature that we've developed for PowerPoint. So a lot of the time PowerPoint users need to make repetitive changes throughout a document and flash format allows them to make these changes by example. So let's say we have a presentation here with many slides with diagrams on them and let's say that the user would like to make a repetitive change such as changing the color of all the diamond shapes in the presentation uh, into yellow. So he can do that using flash format by first going to the flash format tab at the top and then there are two buttons here start new examples and flash format. So before starting a repetitive editing task the user can click the start new examples button to indicate that he's about to give new examples to the system and then he can give a few examples of the transformation that he would like to make. So let's say in this case he wants to change color of the diamond shapes into yellow and maybe he wants to change the color of the text into blue. So he gives two examples of that and then going back to the flash format tab if he clicks flash format the system tries to infer a generalization from those examples and applies it throughout the presentation. So in this case the system infers that the, the user wants to change all the diamond shapes in the presentation in this way. Now the user can also undo the changes made by flash format in the standard way using the undo button or just clicking control Z. Now if the user doesn't want the transformation to be applied to the whole presentation then they can select certain parts of the presentation maybe they select certain objects and then if they click flash format after selecting those, then the changes are just applied to those objects. Or they can select certain slides in the slide panel over here. And selecting those slides, uh, there is a question on whether you want to apply only to those slides. And if you say yes, then only the shapes on those slides would be transformed. And if there is no selection made and the, the user clicks flash format, then the changes are made in the whole document. So let's undo that, all of those changes. And let's look at another example. So the transformation that is inferred by the system very much depends on the examples that the user gives. So let's say that the user is not interested in the shape of the objects, but instead wants to highlight any shape that has uh, underlined text inside it. So in this case, he gives four examples of that. And then clicking flash format, the system infers that any shape that contains underlined text should be highlighted in this way. So the transformation very much depends on the examples that the user gives and the more examples the user gives the better and usually three or four examples are sufficient. Flash format also works incrementally so if at this point the user would like to apply the transformation more generally then he can just click the flash format button again and the system then tries to apply the transformation more generally to more similar shapes. So in this case we see that all the diamonds and the gray boxes have been changed. And if we click flash format again, then we see that all the red boxes now have also changed. So the, the system generalizes further the more times you click flash format. However, let's say that the user at this point did not want all the red boxes to change, then he can undo that last change and he can give more examples to guide the system further. So let's say he wants to change only all the no boxes, so he can give two more examples of no boxes and then apply this transformation more generally by clicking flash format again and that causes the system to change all of the no boxes in the presentation. Similarly at this point if the user wants to give further examples, he can maybe change all the yes boxes as well, and then clicking flash format again to generalize to all the yes boxes in the presentation. So in this way, the user can guide the system through the generalization process. So let's assume that the user is now happy with all of these changes made and wants to start a new repetitive task. Then he can go up to the top here and click the Start New Examples button again, and that would clear all of the previous examples, and we can start giving new examples. 
So let's say now the user wants to make certain formatting changes to arrows in the presentation. So again, he clicks on a few examples, and uh, maybe he wants to increase the thickness of these arrows, and uh, maybe he wants to change the arrow type. So pretty much any of the formatting features available in PowerPoint um, could be used. Um, and then having given three examples, he applies flash format um, to the whole presentation. And we see, in this case, it's only the straight line arrows that have changed, because um, all of the examples that the user gave were of straight line arrows. So at this point, if the user wants to apply generally to all the arrows in the presentation, then he can select one of these elbow connectors, as an example, and apply flash format to that. And having given one example of that, he can further generalize by clicking flash format again. And we see that that causes all of the arrows in the presentation to change in the same way. So let's look at another example presentation. In this case, we have many slides with um, headings and text boxes. Uh, let's say the user wants to make some changes to the headings on, on every slide. So he clicks Start New Example. And you can, again, format the text in, in any way you like. Uh, maybe underline italics. Maybe even rotate the, the text box a little bit. And uh, given one example, in this case, we click Flash Format. And that applies the changes throughout the whole presentation. So let's look at an example with bullet points. Um, let's say we change the type of this circular purple bullet point into a, into a different type. And then we go to another slide, and we select an object, and we click Flash Format. And that applies this change to only the circular purple bullets in this object. However, if the user wants to apply the formatting more generally to this object, then you can select it and then click Flash Format again. And the system would then try to apply the formatting more generally. So we first, the system first asks the user um, if he would like to apply it again to the selected object, because it's already been formatted. And if the user says yes, then uh, the system applies the same kind of formatting uh, to all the uh, bullet points in this object. So Flash Format can also be applied incrementally within objects. Flash Format also supports text transformations, which is based on an integration with the Flash Fill technology from Excel. So in this case, uh, we have a slide with lots of names on it. And uh, let's say we want to change these first names into just uh, the initials. Then we can give a couple of examples of that. And we click Flash Format, and the system applies the same kind of change to all the names in the presentation, which is based on an analysis of both textual and formatting properties of the objects. So here's another example in which we have um, a presentation with uh, many values with trailing digits throughout the presentation. So let's say we want to turn these uh, trailing digits into, into subscripts. Um, so again, we give um, few examples of that. We choose text with different colors. And we give uh, three examples of that in this case. And uh, clicking Flash Format, again, using the textual properties and the formatting properties, the system infers a generalization and applies the same uh, change throughout the presentation, turning all the trailing digits into subscripts. Flash format can also be used to do global alignment and positioning changes. So let's say we want to change the position of, of this whole group of objects relative to where it was before. So we give um, examples by doing that on one slide. Then when we click flash format, we see that the same kind of positioning changes are happening uh, happen throughout all the slides. And notice that uh, not all of the objects are changed in the same way, and it's only the objects that fall under the generalization of the examples that were given. Flash format can also be used to align objects correctly across slides. So if you look at the, the map table text box in this case, we see that um, it is not aligned correctly in the different slides. And so if the user would like to fix that, then he can again click Start New Examples, 
and maybe he aligns it correctly on the first slide and then clicking flash format with just one example it is now aligned correctly across all the slides so those were some of the things you can do using flash format and please contact us if you have any further questions thank you